Hey guys, what's up? It's Jules here for What Culture Wrestling, joined by the ladder to my moneyed briefcase bank, Adam Wilborn, and we have just come fresh off the heels of Money in the Bank 2019, the most banter show of the year so far, and we will get to the reasons why very shortly. In one word, how are you feeling? Flabbergasted. Good. Right, let's go on and start with what went down, because seriously, there is a lot of things that happened tonight, and a lot of them are pretty extreme. We kicked off with the fact that the, uh, we're calling them the Eco Life Experience uh, because of the naming convention, which was Rowan and uh, Daniel Bryan went up against the Usos. And of course, the tag champions lost because why would you ever have your champions win? A match that was the good, uh, good for the pre-show. Yeah, we went on to fine, the main show. fine. It's getting you excited for the main show. Good mm -hmm. match, but yeah, let's just love our mate and tag team champions lose because uh, yeah, of course. Then we had the uh, first show on the main event, which was surprisingly the women's Money in the Bank uh, match. Now a lot of people posited that this was actually going to open the show and the men's was going to close, which mm -hmm. was, ended up being true. This was a fantastic match, but there were a lot of weird pseudo botches in it but and a very strange injury that wasn't an injury with Carmella's knee that was sold incredibly well with her pushing away Mandy Rose making it seem like she had really pissed her mm. off but turns out that it was a ruse. Yeah she came back later on and attacked her nice little storyline to build off the back of that we had a phenomenal eclipse from Ember Moon oh, from the outside so into good. the ring looked absolutely picture perfect and then it looked like Sonya Deville of course wasn't in the match was just there cheering on her mate Mandy Rose was going to carry Mandy Rose to victory mm. she lifted her up to the ladder and just as Mandy was about to reach and grab the briefcase then basically we got Bailey coming up and uh, out of nowhere and she just pushed her off the ladder push. just, just a single push a poosh, you might even say. Indeed. And also, thank you very much for the poosh sign that was in the crowd. Appreciate that a lot. Um, so that was a, it was a match that a lot of people were kind of a bit upset about because it was Bailey winning again. However, as we posited, we think that it was the right decision it, for something that happened a little bit later on. Yeah, I think Bailey needed to win this. She's been a bit all over the place, what with the tag team titles, then losing the tag team titles, and Sasha going away and not really having anything to do. In terms of rehabilitating her image within the company and positioning her to become a future champion sooner than we thought mm -hmm. uh, this was absolutely the right decision I think most people out of that field especially when you took Alexa Bliss out of it you had to pick Bailey yeah, for definitely, that definitely definitely and then moving on we had the lovely match between Sir Joseph, Joseph and that is not my son oh wait is it my son is it Eddie's son Rey Mysterio yes. and Dominic who, was, who should now be called Dominator, because he dominated the crowd. He even got a little fist bump at the end. Now, these two had what you might call uh, the blow-off match uh, from their WrestleMania match, which was cut short, potentially because of Rey Mysterio's uh, injury, but it saw uh, Samoa Joe in a very dominant position going in as the new United States champion, and he lost it in as much equal, like, flair, it was... Yeah, the match didn't go very long. Mm. Samojo accidentally got busted open, like, twice in two different ways. You couldn't really see what caused that. Pissing blood. And then, as he was about to just power bomb Rey Mysterio to hell, Rey reversed it, rolled him up for the one, two, three, but Samojo's shoulders were clearly up. Cle was they clearly not down. Was it a botch? No, thankfully not. This is just a storyline. You know, not an ideal way to continue this feud, but I'm fine with it. I can watch these two mm. fight forever. I hope in the future they get a proper uh, match on pay-per-view with a lot of time to work with each other. I still hope Samojo makes Dominic go unconscious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you should never wish that for a child, but I'm just saying that in this case it would be great for television. Yeah, exactly. And look, uh, Samoa Joe destroyed Rey Mysterio afterwards. This feud is going to continue and, you know, hot potato in the belt. Some people don't don't agree with it. I'm fine with it between these two because they're both highly respected yeah. individuals. Their styles actually work really well against each other because uh, Samoa Joe is a absolute powerhouse and Rey Mysterio is obviously so light, technical and things like that and they do clash in a very, very interesting way. Speaking of styles that don't work well together, The Miz and Shane McMahon faced off against each other next in a steel cage match. Um, what, what happens when a silver spoon uh, meets a cage? Nothing. Because it's sweat. Just, oh, oh my god. I can't, this should have been sponsored by Right Guard, and it would have been a very different ending. Did they you know, do like, a sweat advert they just did, after this match? They did, do, which is very strange, actually. They seem to be sort of riffing on the fact that, sweat, that sweat McMahon, <laughs> Shane McMahon is one of the most oily men alive. 
He perspires at the thought of sweating. They've taken our joke about him sweating over his opponents and done it so that he won the match. Basically, he just was this typical chicken sh heel trying to escape all the time. Any opportunity trying to climb out the door, crawl out the door, scooch out the door indeed at one Great. point. Yeah. Um, and then Miz got a chair and just wailed on him for a bit. Hit a school crushing finale mm -hmm. that he kicked out mm -hmm. of. It looked for all the world that Miz was going to win and you know, then it was going to go to one all and maybe have some sort of rubber match in Saudi Arabia. No, Shane is 2-0 up now in this feud because as he was climbing away, uh, Miz grabbed his sweaty, sweaty top, which just peeled off oh so disgustingly Revealing to allow... his sort of big sweaty belly. Yes. His tummy. His big tummy. Yeah. Everyone else has a stomach in WWE. Shane McMahon has a tummy. It was... Uh, do you know what? Um, I actually enjoyed the match overall. I wouldn't say it's a very strong match. I wouldn't say it's a very technical match. But I do find it oddly fascinating that we are, like you say, 2-0 in the favour of Shane McMahon in a feud that should it's be... It's the best in the world! He's the best in the world. I agreed, agreed, clearly. But it's, what, it's one of those things where, like, how can you have The Miz in a position where it's like, it makes all the sense for him to win eventually? Yeah. But... <laughs> He's going to have to go to Shane's backyard now and, and beat him in Saudi Arabia. Oh, God, uh, yeah. Next up, we have the Cruiserweight Championship match. Yes! That now gets onto the main card. Sorry, Buddy Murphy. Yeah. All those times you had classic matches on the pre-show. Tony Nese, first match as Cruiserweight Champion on a pay-per-view. Straight onto the main card. It's, it's almost like there's something about Tony Nese that Vince McMahon finds more appealing than Buddy Murphy. And I can't really put my finger on it. Knees! His That's lovely it. knees. That's it. It is actually his knees. Yeah, so he's going up against Davari, and it was uh, actually quite a serviceable match. Yeah, there was there was, there was the odd, odd botch in there. There was a bit where you pointed out where Ari Davari sort of botched a bit, and Tony East went, oh, you see Pedro have dropped my leg there. Yeah, Would you like yeah, it back? Yeah, it's kind of like, it's like do, you want, do you want to actually finish this submission holding me? A, a big shout out as well to the fact that in many ways there was a mirroring of Dave Batista's entrance from WrestleMania in that... Tavari drove in in a car with the sunglasses on and managed to botch getting out of the car because they had to pull the curtain back for him to get out. It's like, dude, you should have driven forward a bit more, mate. Stop. Then he, he was like, look at my car. This is my wrestling skill. Look I want to shag my car. <laughs> yeah, God. Uh, but the match itself, yeah, was great. Tony yeah. needs to retain, of course. He's the cruiserweight champion. That is all kind of what to be expected. Uh, next up, we have the first of two title defenses from Becky Lynch. She mm -hmm. started off by defending her Raw Women's Championship against Lacey Evans. What do you think of this? Now, the build to this has been something that's quite interesting because Lacey Evans has been kept off TV for so long and she is still relatively green, obviously having gone through uh, NXT for only quite a short time. However, she is hard as f because of the fact that in real life, she's like an army person. She's got an army background, which makes, uh, makes sense why she's a Southern Belle. So therefore, I do believe that there is some sort of like immediate physicality between these two. And I was very impressed with how they let Lacey uh, actually deliver quite a lot of punishment to Becky before Becky lot. finally got the upper hand. Yeah, a lot of pinfall attempts here. Um, an exciting little match between the two of them. Mm. You could tell sort of more, Becky was kind of saving more to come because she knew she had Charlotte yep. Flair, not only in terms of um, harder competition, but also you knew it was going to be a better quality match against mm. Charlotte Flair. Bit of a confusing end to this match because Again, it didn't yeah. seem like a fault of Lacey Evans here. No, I don't really understand what it was because we were cheering, saying like, "Okay, that's that's a pet." Like it was like a two. It was like what should have been a two count rolled into the disarmer, which Lacey Evans immediately submitted from. But the referee didn't count the the, the pin Forgot at all, to be a and referee. then he slid around the other side and was about to start counting, but then Becky had transitioned it into the disarmer. And, and like I was saying to you guys that like. I believe that even though it doesn't change the match at all in terms of like how it was meant to finish because it was clearly going to be that two count into the disarmer, but that two count actually builds a bit of mythos for Lacey Evans because yeah, it's like you, you almost got it. You, now it just looks like everyone's going, oh wait, what? We, uh, okay. But anyway, yeah, so uh, Lacey Evans was, uh, I was going to say beaten off, but that's got different connotations by Becky Lynch, so and then she had to roll straight into a top Well, yeah, bench. Becky Lynch went to leave and be like, right, I'll come back in a little bit for my SmackDown Tag, uh, tag Team SmackDown Women's Championship match. And uh, Charlotte Flair came out beaming and went, no, 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 straight back in that ring. We're having this match right now. Very nice little bit of psychology from the heel. Uh, Positively skipped down the ring. Oh, it was so absolutely happy. brilliant. And they had a really, really entertaining match. But I, I, that finish kind of pissed me off, I've got to be honest. So if we just go into a bit more detail about uh, the match itself, it was like quite a thorough beatdown because obviously Becky was on the uh, on the defence for most of it. She wasn't prepared as much as she would like to have been. But then, out of nowhere, we got a roll-up pin that we all thought was a three-count. Yeah, well, just prior to that, so 
Charlotte Flair gets knocked to the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, Becky Lynch is sort of resting the ropes. Lacey Evans comes back down the ring, back down to the ring, hits her with a women's yeah, right, yeah. Uh, whilst the referee's distracted. Charlotte Flair gets back into the ring and then, but then immediately gets, uh, as she's about to, to finish her off with a big boot, gets immediately rolled up. But then I don't know what happened. So. And we counted three, the audience seems to count three, but then all of a sudden it was counted definitely a two. Yeah. And then it was... Big boot. Then it was done. And then we had a moment of, okay, so that's not great for the WWE audience because of the fact that, oh, look, Charlotte Flair's the SmackDown champion again. Then they started beating on Becky for a long time before Bailey comes down, cashing in her money in the bank after helping uh, fend off um, uh, Becky from these two onslaughts, cashing it in against Charlotte, and then immediately winning pretty much. Yeah, she, um, Charlotte went for a spear, uh, Bailey dodged it, mm. or, or a big boot, and Bailey dodged it, threw her into the ring post, basically knocked her unconscious, contemplated it for a while, and then yes, of course, cashed in one, two, three. Bailey is your new SmackDown Women's Champion, celebrate with the crowd. It's one of those things, uh, in the midst of it all, you're like, what's going on? Is this good or yeah, bad? Yeah. But at the end of the day, Becky is still Raw Women's Champion and has a lot of stuff to go on with the Lacey Evans, who are of course costing that SmackDown Women's Championship yeah. and getting involved in that match. Charlotte is no longer SmackDown Women's Champion, so it's not no longer the sort of oh, typical, right, we're just going to put the belt back on her. Bailey has this new lease on life because mm -hmm. she's the SmackDown Women's Champion, and you have a ready made feud between her and Charlotte going forward. All's well that ends well. Yeah, bumpy row, but we get there in the end. Although I have to say that what definitely did put a bit of a dampener on it was the uh, promo that was at the end of uh, when she was doing her sort of acceptance speech or a victory speech, and it just sounded so carbon copy pasted, and I just felt it did seem like a bit of a sort of uh, middle finger to maybe Sasha Banks of the sort of like look what happened. Yeah, who, uh, did stick around. Yeah, so, I don't know. I don't know. It was maybe maybe reading in too much for that. But then after that, I'm looking at this thinking you've gone from <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh yeah, it's Roman Reigns versus Elias. Because this actually should be less of an eighth match and more nine because it was only nine flipping seconds long. Yes, exactly. Uh, we had a, a bit with Roman walking backstage. He got bonked by Elias who came down to perform an electric concert. It was, uh, it was electrifying because not only did he manage to actually finish a full song for once, but it actually had some pretty hilarious lyrics basically Dissing the town, yeah. as you would expect. Screw you, Hartford. And the only thing is, is though, as you pointed out, that's a bit disappointing that he's got an electric guitar because you know he's not going to break anyone in, the, yeah. in half with that. But then he got, he sang his song. He went up to uh, up the ramp and said, "This is it. You get one final glance at me doing my power pose." And we thought, "Oh, he's going to get hit in the back from behind." No, he walked up a bit further, did another little speech, and then got finally uh, Superman punched by Roman Reigns, who then threw him in the ring, and uh, then pinned him in nine seconds. Speared him, peered him, one, two, three, in nine seconds. The crowd could not have cared less. I liked it, I think it's fine for Roman. I think this is exactly what he needs re in terms of rehabilitation, in terms of just have him win. What else are you expecting from a Roman Reigns versus Elias match? If they'd have gone 10 minutes, they'd have had the same yeah. result anyway. The crowd weren't hot for it, so no. they've kind of got it over and done with. Let him move on. There's rumours about handicap matches going forward. That would make sense. Yeah, it's, it was a great fun segment that had a just sort of nice, quite cheap pop at the end. So yeah, it was great. Let's move on to what we agree. I think was match of the night: Seth Rollins yep. versus AJ Styles yep. for the Universal Championship. On paper, you knew this was going to be brilliant. Look, the promos towards this haven't been fantastic, but when these two get in the ring, they produce magic. There was, I think, we all agree, Phil, you included. You said this, didn't you? The best. Styles clash sort of reversal yeah, spot we've seen since the AJ's one I've ever, ever since. since AJ's been in the WWE it was fantastic. Uh, Seth Rollins went for uh, the old curb stomp and got lifted into the Styles clash. Um, and I, I for one sort of bought maybe that was going to be the finish. Maybe they were yeah. going to switch the Universal Championship over. But no, uh, just a great match between the two of these. The thing is, is that you got to look at the sort of physicality between the both of them. They are ring veterans through and through and to be honest it felt like it was an equal match the entire time. You couldn't really call it even when one of the men was taking a bigger beat down than the other. You were just kind of like I don't think this is going to be it. Like so many times the false finishes, the classic sort of roll ups into schoolboys. There was a lovely moment when uh, it was a pin attempt into another pin attempt and then that went into a power bomb that went into that and then there was one where he bounced off the rope and did a a pseudo blue fog and arrow, whatever. Oh, you did, yeah, you uh, did. I don't know you what did that rip called. Knee in there. That was, that was it. It was, it was, it was, it was fantastic. Yeah, like, he did a reverse falcon arrow. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a fantastic match from start to finish, and 
it ended in a way that was probably predicted by many in the mm. fact that like Seth kind of has to retain to keep that sort of like beast slam uh, mythos going. But Speaking it, of which. But it ended properly in the fact that AJ Styles got back into the ring and they shook hands after some mega powers. Uh, mm. sort of like, like, are they going to do it? But I think that that was a fantastic way to round off that sort of feud in a nice way that doesn't... Although, having said that, might carry I'll, ha on. I'll happily watch these two fight again. I just need one of them to turn heel. Well, that's the thing. I'm, I'm kind of glad that they both saved face mm. in, that, in that example. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic match. Uh, easily match of the night. Moving on, we had Kofi Kingston versus Kevin Owens. And it's great to see Kevin Owens back in the ring, embracing that heel persona that so has made good. him so, so famous. And Kofi basically proving in a very different light that he doesn't need the backup of the um, the New Day to be a successful champion because a lot of people were worried that he was going to basically fall back on the numbers game and have support coming through there. This shows that even when he's isolated he is still a fantastic athlete and an incredible wrestler. Yeah, he's, he's, he's great and uh, I, I really enjoyed this match and I think it's exactly, it's kind of what everyone expected. I don't think many people thought that Kobe Kingston was going to no. lose his WWE Championship on the first defence, especially against someone like Kevin Owens who can just be re-established as a threat at mm. any point or another. There was some you know, typically great spots in there, a nice pop-up powerbomb, an SOS out of nowhere, uh, a, a trouble in paradise out of nowhere in fact yeah. as well, that knocked Kevin Owens out of the ring, Kobe Kingston, the classic, no. That's your favourite thing, isn't I it? I love it when they do stuff like that. A big Big banter moment as well when Kevin Owens decided that instead of uh, getting uh, clocked in the head again with his uh, shoes, he will just steal Kofi's shoes and lob them into the crowd to stop their, uh, his feet being dangerous because he had shoes on. Didn't and work. He's still, still hit him, still lost, but yeah, it's great to see uh, Kevin Owens back in the game and actually shedding this weird sort of dad comedy routine that he was doing a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, they weren't sure what they were doing. I'm, I'm glad he's now, he's now a threat. He's dropped the silly tie and stuff like that. So yeah. yeah, if he can't get big O, he's still a big E in a different sense. He's a big E, big thumbs up. Um, then <laughs> right, main guys. event time. Well, we should mention, by the way, prior to this main event, mm. the sort of thing, the, the story that had been going on throughout the show, we'd had Sami Zayn initially trying to talk to Triple H whilst he's on the phone. Hunter, can I, can I have a quick word? Where's Shane? Uh, and then uh, he got Braun Strowman turned up, trashed the place, yep. was hunting down Sammy for, of course, what happened on Monday Night Raw with him taking his spot. We found Sami Zayn hung upside down by the feet. Braun Strowman was told to go home. Mm -hmm. We were told by Michael Cole that neither of them were going to be in the match. We all thought, yeah, one is probably going to be well, in the match. Well, there was the, like, we had speculations that it was either going to be Braun was going to come down and just be like, screw it, I'm going in anyway, or it's going to be Sammy coming down pretending to fake sell it and then just going, ha <laughs> ha. And just got because uh, Braun, yeah, Braun said he had no no idea about what happened to Sammy, so we thought maybe he'd set it up and faked being attacked. There was even uh, rumors of, of like we thought that maybe this was when they were going to debut Bray Wyatt's new gimmick because it was like you know could be the sort of like fireflies. Oh, they, how wrong we were! We could not have been more off the mark, but I'm glad that we were proven to be them uh, because this match itself, before we talk about the ending, was. Fantastic! A yeah. spot fest that managed to combine the likes of the heavyweight hitting of your regular sort of WWE main event status and the classic sort of 205 live spots. And have to, to give credit where credit's due, Baron Bloody Corbin with possibly the best choke slam I've seen in the last sort of couple of years. Yeah, ch choke slam in our league through oh my the God, it, was, it was on May 19th. He did it because of Kane. He did it to reference Kane. For you. It's for you, big he's man. He's not dead. But no, he's anyway. not dead, but he's probably a bit taller than us. Yeah. Um, and he's deep six as well. And he's oh, deep six which, on the outside and a claymore. Like five oh. rotations, wasn't it? But mainly, RIP Finn Balor's back. Oh, God. Because Jesus Christ, he got um, sort of... Sunset flip, flip power Sunset bomb. flip power bomb by Andrade mm -hmm. onto a ladder, like bounced twice onto it. He got thrown by Drew onto the edge of a ladder. And then he got suplexed again by Drew uh, onto oh, the full width of the ladder. God, it was hot. Also, he just threw a ladder in at one point. Also, uh, shout out to Ricochet for taking that ladder uh, oh. uh, that just broke the ladder in half. Saw dust everywhere, he's wheezing. Uh, Drew McIntyre getting RKO'd off the ladder. It that was, was lush. Like you say, it was just an absolute spot fest. And we were there at the end going, who's going to win this? I was sat there going, Sami Zayn's going to come out. And go. yeah. We were saying, Cause someone's going to come out. Ali was climbing. We were thinking, "Oh my God, Ali is going to claim the Money in the Bank champ, uh, Money in the Bank contract." And then, <laughs> no, your ears do not deceive you. Brock Lesnar returned, pushing over a ladder, nearly killing about three cameramen in the process. I have to go back and watch this, not for the bit where he came out, or the bit where 
People reacted. I just want to see those cameramen running for oh. their lives when he just t- bollocks to that ladder. Right I, in, a, in he comes, and the laugh at the top of the ladder. I I died because of the fact that as, earlier on in the stream, I just jokingly said, "What if it if it was Braun?" Because I just thought, "What's the what's the most ridiculous thing?" But also the most sort of like. Maintain the status quo. We need we, we need to pop some ratings. What are we gonna do? Oh, I know. Brock Lesnar and he's looking in great shape. Yeah. He climbed to the top of the ladder after chucking everyone off. He pissed himself in two possible ways because first one he was laughing his ass off, but then you saw the ladder shake and you yeah. realise Brock doesn't climb ladders no. at all. He has no need to break the surly bonds of gravity when he is as as big a mass as a black hole. Paul Heyman, what a payday for him. 100, 150 grand just for standing on the ring apron and going <laughs> Walks down, Brock climbs in, chucks Harley off, screw you, climbs the ladder, grabs the briefcase, looks into someone in the crowd and gone, yeah, it's me. Yeah, bloody hell. Yeah, he looked as surprised as they did. Honestly, the crowd was ripped in half by this. Uh, our chat on our stream. No, was no, just, no. It was AEW and no f this company. Like you, I can understand why this is going to piss off so many people, and I am in no way defending it because it is not what I want to see. That that was a joke pulled out of the ether. Yeah. So to see it come back again and know that this is just setting up for something to happen at either the next Saudi Arabia show or the one that, that's coming back after that is, it's tiring to think that the wheels have spun and they came off for a bit, but all that happened was that new wheels were put back on and Brock's still driving the car. Um, like, I don't understand We've got it. this new company that's gonna be threatening us that are really cool, they're new, they're innovative. What are we gonna do? I don't know, everything that we've just been doing for the last few years, sounds good. The only thing I can hope is that they double down on Seth being the guy and they allow him to beat Brock. It's so not gonna happen, no. but at the same time, there we go. That was Money in the Bank. Money in the Beast, more like, eh? Eh? That's funny in the bank, And though. we get a new championship on Raw as well. Mick Foley's gonna bring Hopefully it out. Hopefully they'll just give it to Braun and then he can go away and just say that he's the big champion. Oh, actually, you know what? Speaking of championships, where's Braun's golden leaf belt? Big, big green belt, he's gonna be defending that in Smoking uh, it. Uh, Super Showdown, probably. Anyway, know. brothers, that has been Money in the Bank 2019. It was a ridiculous <laughs> affair. Ridiculous affair. But at the end, of the, you're just really reliving it now, aren't you? Bro, this is Mr. Money in the Bank. I know, he's Mr. Money, that is absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, that is what's happened. I've been Jules, this has been Adam Wilborn. You can follow me at RetroJ with a zero and... You can follow me at Adam Wilborn on Twitter, ridiculous. Let us know what you thought about this down in the comments section below. And remember guys, you've been awesome. Never forget that. We'll speak to you soon. Bye.